I read the full 100 page report from Triple Wall analyzing over a billion dollar in e-commerce revenue as well as looking through over 11,000 shops and their data to come to you today with my 2024 e-commerce marketing predictions. So everything I've learned from reading these 103 pages of report will be compiled into this video to help you secure your brand's future this upcoming year. If you're new to the channel, you don't yet know who I am. My name is Justin and I'm the founder at paidadvertising.com, an e-commerce growth firm specializing in elevating thriving brands by simply simplifying e-commerce growth. And why should you listen to me? Well, first and foremost, I've spent over $12 million on ads in the last three years. We've worked with 70 partners and we are also one of the highest tiers of partners at Triple Well itself, which is why I'm bringing you this video. So let's get straight into it. If you want to read the full report, it is available actually in the link in the description down below through our free school community. I've actually uploaded the PDF right there for you to check out. So it's there if you feel like reading 100 pages. If you're like me, you're a little lazier and and you want to have a condensed version of the learnings that might be most applicable to you, then check this video out. So to add some context right here, what Triple Wall did, they only took the stats from the four day weekend of Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And then they benchmarked that across all of their stores and split that across uh, different revenue thresholds. It is still a very good indicator of the space as a whole because there's a lot of data happening within this four day weekend. And when you compare it to year over year trends, it helps you see in general how the space has been moving, which is why essentially I'm titling this video, my 2024 e-commerce marketing predictions. So they've divided that into the one to $5 million AR or sorry, actually they divided that into the below $1 million AR threshold, then one to 5 million, then five to 10 million, 10 to 50 million, and then 50 million plus. I will kind of list the buckets in the following way. Like, Zero to 1 million has its own quirks in my opinion, and it's very close to one of 5 million. So zero to 5 million, to be honest, I'm kind of bundling up together. Um, five to 10 million, it's kind of this middle segment that has its own quirks. And then $10 million up, I feel is very similar in terms of stats and analysis. But I wanna start with you with some of the general observations I've had from reading like these 100 pages of data uh, from, from Triple Well. So out of all ad channels, Google Ads has had the biggest downfall of the entire year. Like CPMs were up 21.3% as an average. CPA were up 31% on average. So brands on average, once again, moved 12.7% of their budget away from Google with the majority of it allocated to Meta or TikTok. So two big things you're gonna see recurring for kind of every store size, no matter the store size in general, is Google ads going down throughout the year. I'll kind of explain why throughout this video, you'll you'll get to understand why I think that's the case. But just letting you know, like the stats have spoken, Google ads has been very tricky for a lot of brands in this last year. Now, Meta on the opposite side has had a 4.6% boost in ad budget, 1.8% lower CPM year over year, 3.3% better CTR, and 3.2% lower CPA over the last year. So Meta is actually doing a little bit better. And it's good to see that a platform that big has been not only quite stable, but in fact, incrementally better than the previous year. Now, TikTok obviously saw a big boost. So they saw a 17.25% boost in ad budget year over year, but it, they still only represent about 4% of the total industry's ad spend, which is just insignificant when you compare that to Facebook as an example, which is 60 to 70% of the budget based on the different brand sizes. And Google ads as an example, being about like 20 to 30%, depending on again, the brand size. CPAs are down 45.8% on TikTok, most likely due to the rise in TikTok shop. Snapchat and Pinterest, both very down in the last year, both in ad spend allocation, also in results overall. So these platforms honestly have always been considered secondary or even third tier platforms in the space as a whole, but it seems that even more so this year, it's been a little hard for a lot of brands um, on this, especially the lower echelons, the top echelons, the top of the brands, the $10 million up, have had a much better time with these secondary and third tier channels uh, versus the smaller brands, which we'll get into why. Now, another very big uh, point, which I'll kind of skip ahead, I'll scroll down here in my learnings, but look at the AOV per app platform. I ranked them by highest to lowest AOV overall. Pinterest is the top one. So $117 AOV. Meta is second. Google is third. Snapchat is fourth. Look how much lower TikTok is. It is less than half of the fourth place. It is about a third of the first place. When you look at that, what that tells you is that any brand who's really succeeded at TikTok, either by default had a lower product price point, or what we've seen across the different segments, 
is a lot of Brian created a product and marketing strategy tailored to TikTok. So either with a loss leader or with a much lower price product to get customers from TikTok. It's proven and you'll see that also in a bit, but TikTok was very effective for customer acquisition for a lot of these brands. It's okay essentially for you to have a product strategy, perhaps at a lower price or some kind of secondary product you create specifically for TikTok. Um, but once again, we'll get into that in a bit. Now, Meta's share of total percentage volume of sales rose by 17.8% this year. So out of all the sales that were brought in by various ad channels, Meta by far increased by a lot. So a lot more sales were attributed to Meta. Google decreased by 27% and TikTok increased by 135%, which again, it's only 4% of the industry's ad spend. So it's a big percentage, but it's not big volume. Meta is very interesting though to see that because 17% of the volume of purchasers coming from Meta is quite significant. Some of my learnings now just from general stores and not breaking it down essentially per thresholds are the following. So what I've learned from the above, number one, I made a video, I believe last summer following this video I saw from Common Thread Collective, which if you're not familiar with who they are, Common Thread Collective actually is one of the biggest e-commerce agencies in the US. I believe they have over 200 clients on retainer. They've worked with some pretty big brands and now they also have their own internal brands they're billing out. But they released a video in early summer 2023 saying it'd be a very hard summer for a brand because they were saying that middle of funnel and bottom of funnel were drying out for a lot of different businesses that a lot of the small businesses really filled up their funnel during COVID, right? During the pandemic, they really filled up their uh, funnel. They got a lot of new customers through the door. They spent a lot on ads. CPMs weren't as high. So a lot of new followers etc came to the funnel and then we saw a rise in returning customer rates over the last year and a half which a lot of customers were coming back which they were acquired essentially early COVID time but now that pipeline is starting to run dry not only that but you'll see in a second too the landscape of advertising has become so much more competitive that costs have risen and it's kind of straining out the smaller brands so basically I believe I've seen something similar happen with some new brands of ours and I think this is partially also why Google has been going down so much in performance because every smaller brand I've seen that were heavily bullish on Google ads overpaid social um, had a much harder year this year because um, the purchase intent is drying up. So I think that's not the full answer, which I'll get to in a second, right? But you need to renew this intent through paid social intent is kind of created or at least um, enhanced if you want through paid social and it's captured by paid search. So if paid search is going down in performance, it means there's less intent to purchase. People are making more impulse buying decision, which is kind of my second reason here. I find it quite scary that TikTok is so much on the rise that the AOV of TikTok is so much lower and that Google is going down because that means the percentage of impulse buying decision has increased through the roof in the last year because people won't impulse buy something that's 100 bucks, but they'll impulse buy something at $40, which is what they're doing with TikTok, quite frankly. TikTok in itself, people, I've said it so many times on the channel, but they're in the mentality to scroll, 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 scroll. They're not ready to make a buying decision. And if they do, it's a quick buying decision. They don't think, they just buy. So it has to be an impulsive buy. And whereas with paid search, typically there's intent once again behind somebody specifically searching for something. So there's less intent, more impulsive decisions right here, which is again, I think a little bit scary because I feel like we're losing control a little bit as, as kind of marketers and as, as brands more specifically. It's trends are a lot more important. It's important important also to adapt rapidly to this kind of ever changing trending market if you want. Um, and I think which kind of get, leads me into one of my third reason why I believe Google is down, but TikTok is very up. Um, drop shippers is the main demographic that is advertising at a lower price point that has trending products that has the ability to adapt very quickly without changing the whole nature of the brand because there's no brand. It is drop shippers. So I think this is why we're seeing TikTok rise so much, especially with TikTok shop. Heck, if I was drop shipping myself, I'd probably try to drop ship through TikTok shop over um, over other sources essentially this year, right? So now leading on essentially to the second learning I've had kind of total from, from every store stats combined, um, Facebook quite frankly figured out their algorithm. Last year was was honestly very so-so. It was trendy to hate on Meadows, trendy to push TikTok. It was trendy to just basically do a bit a big like middle finger at Facebook. Whereas this year, clearly soft metrics are looking better. Total purchase volume from Facebook is also looking a lot better, which I think is very good news for a platform this big. Now, 
Now, definitely TikTok's move to introduce shop, I think is one of the best decisions the platform has made this year by far. They had crazy incentive once they first launched in the summer, which I've seen brands not only having their ad spend matched, so one-to-one -one matching on your ad spend. If you spend a dollar, TikTok would give you a dollar back. And they even offered 50% off to every like new customer you would get. So your customers would buy your products at half off. You would get the full percentage of the sale because TikTok would match that 50% off, which is just crazy if you think about it. So I believe here, and this is kind of where I'm going, I believe if more ad platforms move in this direction, we will see a continuing drop in Google ads performances. Because once again, now Meta has the Meta shop. I've got a handful of clients that are thriving off of Meta shop. They're doing very, very good off of Meta shop. Now we've also launched a couple stores with TikTok shop. Some of them are crushing it on TikTok shop. Many brands are crushing it on TikTok shop. So why would you search a brand up on Google if you can just search through TikTok's platform or through Facebook and find the same products either on the Meta shop or on the TikTok shop. This is going to cost a lot of money to Shopify and also to platforms like Google because we're needing them less and less. And I think if Meta and TikTok continue investing into their own proprietary shopping algorithm, it will cost a lot once again to these other platforms. Another move that Meta is making recently, right? I don't know if you've seen that, but there is a TechCrunch article. Let me find it right here. So I don't know if you've seen that, but it was announced in November that Meta and Amazon teamed up to launch like a new test feature in the US where people can click essentially on a Facebook ad and they can check out using Amazon straight on Meta. So they don't really leave Meta. It's like a native checkouts happening on Meta through Amazon account. So that's also very interesting. People don't need to even go to Amazon anymore. They can use Amazon products or get Amazon's benefits from Facebook natively, which once again, why Google if you can simply do all of this from the platform. So that in itself, honestly, Google is a little scary. I'd say for the next year, we'll see where that leads overall. But uh, definitely, I think Google has a lot, um, a lot to think about in terms of how they're they're gonna want to play this out from an ad uh, from an ad basis. Now, looking at these AOVs, I've kind of said it earlier. I've talked about those, but this reinforces the fact that TikTok shops aren't or TikTok shoppers actually aren't in the mood to make a complex buying decision. They want a quick, snappy buying decision. So price point is key. Um, the highest reported source also that was something very interesting. Um, Tripwall also released both native uh, post purchase survey responses. So within Tripwall's own post purchase survey, uh, like thingy that you can add in your checkout or through like any third party that were synced on Tripwall. By far, every single category, the highest um, sources reported from post purchase surveys has been Instagram. Instagram, with about 17.8% total of replies going to Instagram, which means that Instagram in general seems to have the highest recall factor amongst customers. Facebook was, by the way, second across again, every brand and across if you, even if you isolated that at a demographic level. So it's quite interesting that Instagram is first also above Facebook. It's probably when I say recall factor, it's just when people see an ad, how are, likely are they to kind of recall where they've seen this ad from? Instagram seems to be a very default response for a lot of shoppers. And that is it for the general stats of kind of every uh, threshold of brands combined together. So that is it for part one of this video. If you want to see stats for your own revenue threshold, so let's say you're zero to $1 million or more, essentially, I'll go through all the different thresholds of revenue and the stats and learning specific to these brand sizes in part two. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to be notified when part two will be coming out. And on that note, if you are an e-commerce brand owner wanting to partner with a paid ads partner, on would it be Meta, TikTok, or Google this upcoming year? Click the link down below and book a call to speak with our team. And I'll be seeing you in part two. Cheers.